Hi, and welcome to Wake TV. I'm your host, Leah Holdren. The vaccine rollout is underway and we've got a lot to talk about, so stay tuned. Every year in December, the Board of Commissioners elects a new chair and vice chair. This year, the board elected Matt Calabria as chair and Vicki Adamson as vice chair. Dara Demai sat down with them to talk about their priorities for the upcoming year. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to Wake TV. It's a new year, and Wake County has new leadership on its board of commissioners. Today, we're going to meet our new chair and vice chair and talk with them about their goals for 2021. It's my pleasure now to introduce Chair Matt Calabria and Vice Chair Vicki Adamson. Welcome to you both. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us, yes. Absolutely. Chair Calabria, let's start with you. How does it feel to be leading this board, especially during such an unprecedented time? But, you know, it, it's great. Obviously, we've got some challenges in front of us, but we have just an incredible group of commissioners uh, this year. And everybody, I think, has been very um, engaged and interested in getting some things done for our people. Um, and very collaborative about that. You know, I, I think everybody's got uh, their heart, their heads and their hearts in their place. So I think that's going to be really good. Obviously, this is about as challenging a time as anybody can remember for the county, given the pandemic. We're in the process as we record this of rolling out vaccines amid um, a supply that's very constrained, but we're doing the best that we can. So I think this is going to be a very challenging year, but I also think it's going to be a year when we can get a lot done. We have a lot of pent up demand and a lot of pent up ambition because last year we had to really uh, hunker down and focus almost exclusively on pandemic response and pandemic planning. But now uh, we are not only working to continue testing and vaccination and so many other pandemic related functions, but we've got a lot of things that we want to accomplish because all the issues that existed before exist now. That means education and transportation and affordable housing and so many other things. And so I'm really excited because there's a lot of energy and a lot of optimism despite the very difficult time that we're in. So Vice Chair Adamson, this is your second consecutive term as Vice Chair. How does it feel to be reelected by your peers to such an important position? And what did you learn in your first term that you think is really gonna help you in your second? I'm really honored to be, to be Vice Chair for a second year in a row. The, Two main duties of the vice chair are to support the chair and coordinate appointments to our boards and committees, our citizen boards and committees. One of the things we started last year was trying to diversify our boards more than they have been. So they're truly representative of our communities. And I was able to get a lot done with that last year. We have the first Hispanic gentleman on the Wake Tech board. We have the first Asian gentleman on our planning board, and we are about to appoint this evening the first Native American to one of our boards. And I'm just honored that my colleagues want me to continue this work into 2021. Mr. Chair, in January, the board met, as it does every year, to discuss the goals and objectives for the year ahead. So how did you feel those conversations went? It seemed like a really good vibe in the room, even though we were virtual. I think we had some phenomenal conversations. We have two new members who have come onto the board. And so there is a certain amount of team building really across all seven of us. Uh, but at the end of the day, we all come to the table from diverse backgrounds with diverse perspectives. And I think that's the kind of thing that's going to make us stronger. We have a lot of diversity, but we also have a lot of unity and that's incredibly important. And I think we're gonna have a government that um, reflects you and your priorities, no matter who you are or what walk of life you come from but also focuses on folks who need a little bit of extra help and provides a hand up uh, to those who um, uh, are looking to improve their lives, whether it be through stronger public education or a more inclusive uh, economy or more affordable housing, you name it. So uh, I think we are gonna have a great year 
we've got a lot of optimism that I think everybody on the board feels, and uh, it's going to be a very, very exciting year going forward. I agree with you. Even though we were virtual, there was still a lot of really positive energy in that room. Vice Chair Adamson, one of the goals is community health and vitality. What do you hope to accomplish in this area, particularly during a year where our public's health is top of mind because of COVID-19? Yes, one of um, our community health department has always been a sleepy little department of county government. Now it is front and center. And I think everybody, including all the commissioners are involved in the effort to the COVID effort. And of course, we started the year with getting our first vaccines. So we are all hands on deck to get everybody in Wake County a shot that wants a shot and would like va vaccinated. <clears throat> and on top of that, we also want to improve the health and well-being of our residents by promoting healthy behaviors and lifestyles. And that's everything from our green spaces to anti-smoking, just so that we are not just have longer lives, but we have healthier, happier lives in Wake County. And we are very fortunate to have as much green space as we do. And, and now I think what comes front and center with not just our community health department, but we need to make it easier for everyone to have access to affordable, high quality health care. Because um, <clears throat> unfortunately during COVID, there's been a lot of our citizens who have not had that health care and that absolutely needs to be a priority of this county. And we want everybody to have a higher quality of life, especially for our most vulnerable residents. And this includes inc more affordable housing opportunities, working to end homelessness and expanding as access to nutritional food. This year, we are on track to build more affordable units in one year than we have in any other year in the history of the county. And with our homelessness prevention, our goal is by the end of 2021 to end veteran homelessness. And when this goal was brought in in 2017, we had around 103 homeless veterans in Wake County, and we've gotten that number down to 39. And our goal is to have those folks housed by the end of the year. Chair Calabria, the idea of creating opportunities for residents to thrive plays into your next goal, economic strength. Especially during this uncertain time for businesses and employees, how will the board work to shore up our local economy? Well, I think thematically, one of the things that we're going to be working toward is this notion of prosperity for all. So no matter what your background, we want to make sure that you have the tools that you need to succeed. You know, right before the pandemic, uh, we were pretty close as a county to full employment. And still, we had more than 125,000 people or so who were living below the poverty line. And what that means to me is that um, obviously there's always a scarcity of jobs issue that you have to deal with. But even beyond that, we needed a, a greater number of good paying jobs and we needed to overcome barriers um, for people who are looking to join the workforce but just can't for whatever reason. And so that really allows us to put the whole person, the whole family, the whole child back together when we think about these issues. Um, and so some of the things I think we're gonna be working on include uh, additional worker training. We've already done a lot to incentivize businesses to engage in uh, appropriate or socially beneficial behaviors and encourage and appreciate um, those sorts of things, whether it be living wage or any number of other uh, practices that I think are uh, leading edge, uh, not just here in Wake County, but also in the country. We're also taking a look at what we can do to work with the private sector and public sector entities on things like diversity and equity and inclusion. And currently you're financing a study with RTI to take a better look at that and provide some uh, some items that we can consider later on this year. We're also looking a little deeper at the circumstances that are affecting people. So for example, we have a lot of folks who are working class, maybe want to get back to work uh, and are in critical need fields where we need um, uh, plumbers and HVAC repair folks and those sorts of folks. Um, but uh, uh, maybe they need additional education. So we've been removing barriers to that with our apprenticeship programs at Wake Tech. Or maybe they'd love to get back to work, but the cost of childcare is prohibitive. And so we've, we're looking at things like expanding 
not just um, pre-K programs, but also the child care subsidy, which typically is a federally funded program that enables uh, families who want to get back to work to actually get back to work in a way that makes that, that makes financial sense. When you were talking about children and families, that kind of leads us nicely to my next question, which is about education. And education is another goal that the board is keenly focused on in 2021. <laughs> The focus here, though, is really about going from the cradle all the way to college, yeah. isn't it? It's a long span. Yeah, absolutely. We are committed to educating our citizens from the cradle. Actually, last year we did a uh, Healthy Child Initiative, so we can assure that our babies in Wake County are born healthy and ready to learn and engage with the environment around them. To continuing education, to workforce retraining, we're committed to that because we know that education is the key to a high quality of life. And we support our early childhood, childhood care and education programs that prepare children for lifelong learning and not just what they need to know, but enjoy to learn so they can enjoy all the features that we have here from our museums to our arts to everything we offer in Wake County. And this year we are more committed than ever because of the virtual learning and the challenge that has created for our Wake County Public School students, we're more committed than ever to partner with our school board and our school system to make sure that all our students have good educational outcomes. And one of the true jewels that we have in Wake County is our Wake Technical College. And we have, as Chair Calabria talked about, we have partnered with them to do a Wake Works program which provides for students who need income and can't just go to school full time. It provides a apprenticeships where you're paid a market rate wage and free tuition. So that way all our citizens have access to some type of job training. And we also are working really closely with Wake County Schools and Wake Tech on their long-term capital needs. Because even though we're in COVID, we're still a growing county and we need to make sure we have the appropriate capital needs for our students. You served on the board's public safety committee for several years. So I'm sure the public safety goal is something that's very important to you. Tell us what you hope to do more of in this area this year. Uh, uh, well, I, first, I appreciate the question. You're right, it is important to me. I think uh, because our first responders have done such a good job over the years, uh, it, it's an often overlooked issue area because we don't have the problems with a lot of uh, public safety related issues that we see in other places. I think that we're, uh, I would highlight two things. First, I think in a lot of ways, we're looking more broadly. So we're looking at uh, potentially hazardous um, issues in Wake County, like hazardous chemicals and where they are and how we make sure that there are emergency plans in place so that no matter where you are, uh, we have we have the right apparatus and the right planning in place to ensure that you're safe should anything happen. We're also spending a lot of time looking at recidivism and um, thinking about people um, before they go to jail uh, including in diversion issues and, and counseling and mentorship opportunities while you're in jail uh, through worker training programs and other things that are innate, that are designed to help you get back on your feet. And then once you uh, get out of jail through the reentry process, making sure that you have the best possible chance of success and of not recidivating back into the into the prison. So part one is we're looking more broadly. Part two, I think, is we're looking inward. And what I mean by that is we're taking a look at our first responders and for the first time we are in a robust way looking at the stresses on our first responders and thinking about the mental and behavioral uh, challenges that um, go along with being a firefighter who has to go into very dangerous situations or see very difficult uh, car crashes, just to take one example. Um, another example is to think about the diversity of our workforce. The latest data that I saw a little while back indicated that nationwide only 4% of the fire services in the country uh, were female. 
And in Wake County, only about 4% of our fire service is female. So looking at how we can have a more diverse, more inclusive workforce that um, better represents and better serves our county is gonna be really important. And so those are just some of the issues that I hope we'll explore in the coming year. All very important ones, thank you. Wake County continues to be a place where people want to live, work and play, even during a pandemic. Vice Chair Adamson, what does the board plan to do to manage our growth this year? Yes, even though we're in the middle of this pandemic, we're still having people move to Wake County every day. And part of the reason everybody is moving here and we're having this growth is we're just a wonderful place to live. And, and that's one of our definite board priorities is to preserve our quality of life and enhance it for all our citizens. And we're doing that through coordinated land use planning, transportation planning, and we're still going to continue the to encourage the use of public transit. Prior to the pandemic, that was one of the biggest complaints we got was traffic. And when we all start moving again and the pandemic's over, we will have the traffic. So we're gonna continue our public transit plan and trying to give people options other than just get in your car and drive. We're also concerned and want to protect our abundant water supply because we need a clean water supply going into the future. I think that's one of the best things we can leave our grandchildren is a clean water supply. And we're also continuing our plans to preserve open space and expand our access to parks, preserves, recreational resources and greenways. I think we've seen during this pandemic when we've had to socially distance from each other, how important our greenways are to us. And we also need to promote sustainability and issues associated with climate change. This is not gonna go away and this is something that everybody's got to address and we're gonna to continue to address that this year. Great, I'm definitely one of those Greenway users. I know there's lots of people out there appreciating them and the work you're doing to make sure we continue to of them here in Wake County. The board's last goal is great government. Chair Calabria, what are some ways we're trying to ensure Wake County functions at the highest level? I think there are a couple of different uh, big buckets of things that we're working on. The first is uh, doing a better job of getting community input. So finding ways to build out our community input mechanisms so that we're getting additional uh, information about what people think about our budget priorities, for example, or major issues that we're looking into. So we want to make sure that we um, have avenues for that input. We also want to make sure that we build out uh, our constituent relations um, apparatus so that we can better interface with constituents in a, in a quick, efficient, and effective way to get people's problems solved. Uh, in addition to that, I think the second big thing we're working on is taking a look at ourselves and our own practices to make sure that they are equitable. So uh, making sure that we have um, information coming out of our human services that meets people where they are, and that it's in the right languages, that, um, that addresses the issues that are really affecting people, making sure that we are sensitive to um, all sorts of diversity and equity uh, concerns and dynamics, at, you know, just internally as an employer of about 4,000 people uh, in the county and a big supporter of major government functions like public education and the sheriff's office. We want to make sure that we are good exemplars uh, for our entire community and that we can uh, be as responsive as, as we possibly can. Great. And I'm going to ask the same question of both of you. We'll start with Vice Chair Adamson. You know, I think in this time, it's easy to kind of get down and you know feel constrained because of the effects of the pandemic yes but i want to leave folks today with something that you're hopeful about what are you most hopeful about in your role as our vice chair in 2021 i have three main hopes for 2021 the first one is i want all our citizens who want the covid vaccine to be able to get it in a timely manner and of course, we know that the demand right now way far exceeds the supply. But I personally am waiting on my dose. I'm ready for my dose. And I, I'm sure I feel confident all our citizens will get one. The second hope is that when the economic recovery comes after COVID, nobody's left out. 
and that's everybody in the county gets to benefit from it. Because we think if you look at history, when the plagues happened in the 1400s, after that was the Renaissance. And in the, the flu pandemic of 1918 and 1919 led in the roaring 20s. So I feel like sometime later this year, our version of the Roaring Twenties is coming to Wake County, and I personally am ready for it. And the third one is that by the end of the year, we're all together again, whether that's with your family, going to your favorite play, going to your favorite football game, that there's some semblance of, quote, normal, and that we all take a great appreciate, have a greater appreciation of those events than we have in the past and just that we get to spend time with our friends and family. That's my hope for 2021. Those are all wonderful. I would like to extend the same question to you, Mr. Chair, and see what you're most hopeful about for this year. So uh, my top items are actually very similar to uh, Vice Chair Adamson's. The first and most immediate and most pressing uh, priority we've got is, is overcoming the COVID-19 pandemic. I think we are on our way, uh, but it's going to be a long slog and we've just got to continue doing what we can to make sure that folks get vaccinated, encourage uh, folks to practice the three W's and everything that we talk about on a regular basis. I do think we'll get there. Um, I, I don't think anybody knows how long it will take, but I do feel like we're making progress and we will just have to continue to stick with it. Um, but anybody who didn't think that local government issues were matters of life and death has not been paying attention in the last year. So. That's uh, an incredibly important priority and we've got to stick with that. But uh, putting that aside, if it's even possible to do so, I think um, the other major thing that I want to see coming out of this year is uh, economic mobility and this idea that we can prosper and thrive in its fullest definition. Um, and that no matter who you are, you can look at Wake County and you can say, okay, I can see how this county government and this uh, institution is supporting me and is helping me get to the next level. We have amazing government services. Our libraries are wonderful. Our parks are fantastic. Um, but one area that I really want to focus on is making sure that people are economically supported. I think, I, I believe personally in a, a participatory economy and the idea that everybody through their participation and if given the right opportunities and tools to succeed um, will, uh, enable to, will be enabled to uh, benefit themselves, and benefit their families. And that can come through any of the any of the things we've talked about so far. Uh, but at the end of the day, we want to make sure that everybody is supported in a way that makes sense, that is culturally competent, um, that meets folks where they are, no matter what walks of life um, that they're coming from. And I think that means understanding how to economically uh, benefit and provide services for um, your farmer in Wendell or your business person in Raleigh or your small business owner in uh, Cary, or you name it. And by having these sorts of institutions and these sorts of um, programs in place, I think we're gonna make for a more vibrant economy, a stronger uh, social fabric and a more resilient uh, place to be. Well, I can't think of a better note to end on than that one. Thank you both so much for being part of Wake TV this month. And if anybody who's watching has interest in learning more about the board goals or about our work on COVID-19, I strongly encourage you to go to our website, wakegov.com. Hello, my name is Stephanie ATN, and I'm a physician with Wake County. And I am very pleased to find out that I will be able to get a vaccine on tomorrow. Today is De Monday, December 21st. I'll be getting my vaccine at Rex Hospital. I'm excited about getting this vaccine. Um, ever since March, actually, I can recall the exact date, March 14th. I've been very, very concerned about this virus, of course, being a healthcare provider and going to work every single day and not knowing if today will be the day that I indeed become positive with COVID and potentially develop complications or um, problems related to the virus. And one of my biggest concerns, of course, would be to get sick and potentially spread it to my husband and children at home. Every day coming home wondering 
will my test be negative this week? Hopefully it will be, but there was never a guarantee. You know, so far I have been negative, thank God. I'm tested pretty much every week now. And another reason that I'm very excited about getting this vaccine is to do my part in flattening the curve. It's gonna take millions of people to get vaccinated for us to slow the transmission of this virus, to decrease the number of people who are dying or suffering due to complications from this virus, and so that we can get back to a sense of normalcy in this country. So I'm very excited about tomorrow. And I'm not really nervous because I'm actually more concerned about possibly getting COVID if I'm not vaccinated. So this is a much better alternative to get the vaccine. And just like other vaccines, you know, usually you may have mild side effects, maybe a arm pain, you know, maybe mild symptoms, but I'm not concerned about any significant side effects. I'm gonna be optimistic and grateful that I have this opportunity. This is Stephanie ATN and I'm a family physician. Today is Tuesday, December 22nd, and I'm here at the Rex Heart and Vascular Hospital getting my COVID-19 vaccine. I'm not nervous. Here we go. Okay. Hard part done for today. That went well. I'm not feeling anything right now. I actually could barely feel it when he was giving me the vaccine, which was surprising. With some shots, you can feel a little burning, but I didn't. I just felt a very small prick, yes. okay. and then he was done. So, did you do the news? That's good news so far. Okay. And then she. Good morning. This is Stephanie ATN, and today is Wednesday, December twenty third. It's been about twenty four hours since I received my COVID nineteen vaccine, and I'm feeling very, very good. Actually, yesterday evening, maybe about five o'clock, I did notice some achiness in my arm, but. Um, and also when I went to sleep last night, when I was lying down, I did notice that my arm was a bit sore. But this morning when I woke up, I just noticed very, very minimal soreness and it's really right where I received the vaccine. There's no redness or any um, sign of infection or anything. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling very grateful to receive the vaccine and I'm looking forward to receiving my second dose on January 12th. And that is all for now. And I will update if there's any change in my condition, but I'm gonna claim that there will be no complications or any problems. Goodbye. That's all for this episode of Wake TV. Keep up with the latest Wake County news by visiting us online at wakegov.com slash news. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube so you can always stay in the loop. We'll see you next time.